And welcome, everyone, to our last Bracket Breakdown before Selection Sunday. I'm Andy Katz. All right, so the number one seeds have been pretty consistent over the last month. I cannot remember a time where it has been this locked in for at least three of the four number one seeds for weeks at a time. Without question, Purdue, Houston, and UConn locks. It's going to be so easy. Purdue, Indy, Detroit, Houston, Memphis, Dallas, UConn, Brooklyn, Boston, if they all advance to the Sweet 16. So who's the fourth number one? You see it on your screen. North Carolina. The Tar Heels right now are the fourth number one. I firmly believe that after sweeping Duke and Tennessee losing at home to Kentucky, Arizona losing to USC. All Carolina has to do is win the ACC tournament. They may not have to do that, depending on what happens with Tennessee. I don't see a scenario where Arizona can jump back up to the one line. It's really Kentucky or Tennessee. Kentucky's in the pole position. The SEC tournament's going to be much harder to win for the Vols, even in Nashville, based on the talent from Kentucky, Alabama, Auburn, South Carolina. Any of those schools could win the SEC. In the ACC tournament, Pretty much only believe it's either Duke or Carolina. Carolina's obviously got Duke's number so far. We'll see if that happens. So those are your four number ones. With that being said, our number one overall seed right now is Purdue. That means Purdue in the Midwest would take on the fourth number one seed, which is North Carolina. So we would have Midwest, West. Remember that. Number one overall seed plays the fourth number one all overall, fourth number one. That's why when you have a blank bracket, you don't know which regions are where until Selection Sunday. So we'll see if this holds. But right now, Purdue is the one overall. I do think if Purdue were to lose the Big Ten tournament and Houston win the Big 12 tournament, we could see a flip. I think we could see Houston as the one overall, and that would make the South bracket in that first position against the West. The fourth number one is going to be the West. So let's take a look here. All right. Purdue one, Merrimack Grambling, uh, Texas FAU, Utah State Grand Canyon. Utah State wins the Mountain West Conference. It's going to be hard to win that conference tournament. Auburn, Irvine. Irvine, uh, Big West, not going to be easy for them to win. We'll see if they can hold on. Washington State goes into the Pac-12 as the two seed. Kyle Smith named Coach of the Year in the league to, on Monday or Tuesday, which is great news. And here we have an 11, Mississippi State, Indiana State. All right, right off the bat, right off the bat, everyone wants to know, are the Sycamores going to make it? They lost to Drake on Sunday. I think they do. Yes, they got one quad one win. Auburn only had one quad one win. Yeah, they lost Illinois State and at Southern Illinois. They won the league 28-6. and six. And here's why. In other years, their metrics may not get them in. But the back part of the bracket is so mediocre that they did something. They won, okay? More so than a St. John's, than a Texas A&M. I like Indiana State to be in Dayton, to be one of those four. The optics are going to be tremendous if this happens. And I think it's not a handout. I think it's deserving. Mississippi State, on the other hand, they got some work to do. They're no lock. But I think Indiana State's going to get in. There's Creighton as the three. Toledo right now over Akron. Florida, Colorado State. Look out for the Gators. They could get far here. And then Iowa State, Sam Houston State as your two. All right, so we got Midwest bracket taking on the West bracket. Remember, the Midwest will be in Detroit for their regional final. The West bracket will be in Los Angeles. So here's North Carolina. They'll go probably Charlotte, L.A., taking on Longwood. Um, Then Nevada, Michigan State. Now, Nevada, I think, still could maybe climb to a seven if they win. But Michigan State is the interesting one. The metrics say they're in the 9-10 range. But what happens if they lose that game to Minnesota? If that happens, I won't be shocked if they're in Dayton. I'll tell you that right now, Um, which would put them at the 11 line. 
If you wanted to have Michigan State as a 10 versus 9, I'm fine with that. But those three best wins, I think, are what separates the Spartans and puts them on the 9 line. Um, and it helps, by the way, their bad loss. Opening the season, James Madison, they just won the Sun Belt. So that helps um, for James Madison to get in. But Baylor, Indiana State, and Illinois, those are all really good wins. The Baylor win was in Detroit, so not in East Lansing for what that's worth. Um, BYU, James Madison, you see on your screen, Alabama, McNeese. Wow, Alabama, McNeese. you got Will Wade, former coach at LSU, fired there. If that happens, going against Alabama in the SEC, uh, that would be an intriguing 4-13 game for sure. Um, by the way, E. Rose, see, I hate that. You know why? It, oh, if Indiana State was at any power conference, they have 12-plus losses. But you know what? It wouldn't be the same roster. Okay, I hate these arguments. You can't just lift a team up and put them in a power conference because they recruit to who they are. What if I put Mississippi State out of the SEC and I put Mississippi State in the Sun Belt? You think it's the same roster? Of course not. Ridiculous, he rose. Just ridiculous. That argument is has no merit. You can't lift the team up and put them in another league. It wouldn't be the same roster, okay? So it makes no sense. Goodbye. San Diego State, Drake. Drake wins the Valley. Baylor, Oakland, okay? Gonzaga, Seton Hall, Arizona, Montana. You know, one thing, I'm going to pick up on that point you rose with Gonzaga. Gonzaga has a roster. You want to play that game. Gonzaga has a roster with lottery picks over the last few years that would have competed in other leagues. And let me tell you this. If Gonzaga hosted Kansas and Texas on a regular basis, and look, it'd be hard. they're not going to go one or two losses in the Big 12 the other way, of course, playing in those arenas. But you think Kansas is readily going to win at the kennel? Please. Okay. I hate those arguments. It's ridiculous. Gonzaga, Seton Hall, 7-10. Arizona, Montana. We could get, in our bracket here, we don't list where these cities are, but I'm going to tell you, we had that matchup, that four, in Salt Lake City. Gonzaga, Arizona, in Salt Lake would be a rematch of an unbelievable game in the Blake Step Gonzaga era when Lute Olson, the late great Lute Olson, was coaching Arizona. Unbelievable game in Salt Lake City. Could have a rematch of that. Tommy Lloyd against his mentor, Mark Few. We'll see if that all comes to pass. Uh, Montana still has got to win the big sky. Um, East Washington's out of that. So Oakland, by the way, that could be one of those sleeper teams. I, I like Baylor, though. But still, uh, Greg Campy's done a great job. San Diego State, Drake, uh, the Aztecs, could they get to a five if they win the Mountain West Conference? Maybe. So here's Seton Hall. They're a 10. I think they're fine. Five quad one wins. UConn Marquette at St. John's. Um, look, the Pirates under Shaheen Holloway, he's done an unbelievable job. Great job by Shaheen Holloway. St. Peter's, Seton Hall, tremendous. Back at his alma mater. All right, so I said West uh, versus Midwest. Now we're getting South versus East. South number one is Houston. Again, I think Houston could take over Purdue if Purdue doesn't win the Big Ten tournament and Houston wins the Big 12. I'm not saying it's definitely going to happen, but I think it could happen if that plays out. Boise State, Nebraska. Fred Hoiberg named co-coach of the year with Matt Painter in the Big Ten. Leon Rice has done a great job with the Broncos. And Nebraska, by the way, um, I don't know if they can beat Houston. Uh, or any of these ones, if they're a nine versus a 10. But uh, if they're in the right bracket, they've got the offense to, to win two games and get to the Sweet 16. And Juwan Gary should have been on the all-big defensive team. South Carolina, Richmond. All right, I want to address this, okay? I got a question on this. So this is Richmond as the AQ. This resume in front of me, is not an at-large resume. Neither is Loyola Chicago's. I did pick Loyola Chicago here on Bleacher Report 
to win the A-10 tournament. Um, for these purposes, we we're saying that Dayton is not going to win the tournament. You see them down here as a seven seed. So it was either be Richmond or Loyola Chicago winning the A-10 tournament in Brooklyn. We just went for the team who's technically the one seed for these purposes. But that's overall. My personal opinion is I think Loyola has a great shot to win it, as I predicted on Monday. So that resume you see there, not an at-large. Richmond only gets in if they win the AQ. Same for Loyola Chicago. illinois Sanford. Can Illinois get a three seed? I think they can if they win the Big Ten tournament. Texas Tech, great week last week. And here we go, Virginia, New Mexico. That's your other game in Dayton. Here are the Cavaliers. I saw them um, a week and a half ago in person against Duke. They played horrible. Offensively, really uh, anemic. But played better against Georgia Tech. Um, and they're hanging on by a thread. So we'll see if they can get to the semis. That would help their case. Uh, we'll see who they're going to play as the ACC tournament gets underway here on Tuesday. Um, they're they're just right on the on the edge. The Lobos uh, had a golden opportunity to be safely in three pointer, essentially in the last possession by Utah State. Takes New Mexico down. Um, such a shame because if they win that road game in Logan, they're in. Now I kind of feel like they got to win one game in the Mountain West Conference tournament. The home losses really is what is going to hurt New Mexico, where they lost to Air Force at home, lost to UNLV at home, lost to Boise at home. Those three losses are going to haunt them, uh, especially Air Force um, and UNLV. Um, so we'll see if New Mexico can get in. Be great if Rich Pitino could. Tremendous fan base. I think if they're healthy with Mashburn, House, and Dent, um, They've got guards that can cause a lot of problems. Uh, Toppin, Washington, they've got a really good start in five. Um, they're the kind of team that gets in late, potentially, and wins games. Kentucky, more at State, I like Kentucky in that whole grouping here. Uh, even the whole bottom half of the bracket, Dayton, Colorado, Marquette, Colgate. Colorado, by the way, they earned this bid. They swept the Oregon schools uh, to get in. And uh, by doing that, they put them in a position where I think they're they're definitely going to be in. No question about it. Um, so great job by them. All right, so as I said, this is Memphis for Houston and then Dallas. Last bracket would be the East. And there it is. Number one, UConn against Quinnipiac. That's an in-state game that would be played in Brooklyn. And here's Northwestern and Oklahoma. Um Port of Mosier, by the way, saying I'm staying. I'm not going to DePaul, despite the rumors. Uh, Northwestern, down two starters. Matt Nicholson, out with a foot injury. Ty Berry had surgery for meniscus. And here they are again with Boo Booey, Brooks Beinheiser, Nick Martinelli, uh, and Ryan Langborg. Those four guys and sort of a piecemeal post have gotten it done. Uh, huge home win over Minnesota. There you've got the double by there, the four seed in Minneapolis. Um, if they were healthy, I think they're a Sweet 16 team. In this scenario, I don't see them beating UConn if they were to win the first game. Clemson, South Florida. All right, let me pause again here. What you're seeing on your screen is South Florida as an AQ. This resume in front of you is not an at-large resume. We wanted to do this because this is what happens. So the A-10 still could be a one-bid league if Richmond and Loyola don't win it, and Dayton does. The American could just be a one-bid league if Florida Atlantic wins the, the um, conference tournament, despite South Florida winning the regular season, just like Richmond and Loyola. Again, this resume is not an at-large resume, so South Florida is going to have to win this conference tournament. But that's what we're doing here for these purposes. Kansas, Vermont. Uh, Kansas is ripe for an upset. Kevin McCullough Jr., knee injury, Hunter Dickinson, shoulder. Both will not play this week in Kansas City. We'll see. Maybe they'll get a benefit of being a Friday, Sunday. We'll see how this all plays out. And if that's the case, it gives them more time potentially to be back. Wisconsin, Princeton. 
the Badgers got to have something positive happen in Minnesota before they get there. Princeton, by the way, it's got to get by Brown or Yale or Cornell to earn that. They cannot get an AQ. Duke and Charleston. Uh, Duke uh, can't beat Carolina. Can beat mostly everyone else in the ACC. So we'll see if they can play. I think they will get to the title game against Carolina. St. Mary's, TCU, Tennessee, South Dakota State. Uh, TCU, you know, I think they're going to be in. They got the four quad one wins. They play in the best league in the country. That win at Baylor is massive. They did beat Houston. I think they'll be fine, but they may sweat a little if they lose that game against Oklahoma. St. Mary's playing Gonzaga Tuesday night for the WCC title. Now, look, if the Gales lose that game, there's always a chance they could slide to the 8-9 game. I wouldn't rule that out. Tennessee, Dalton Connect, first-team All-American, SEC Player of the Year. Um, I like Tennessee as the two in this grouping getting there. You know, I think if we saw a UConn-Tennessee uh, Elite Eight matchup, that would be tremendous. What a great game that would be if uh, we had a UConn-Tennessee Elite Eight matchup. Um, so, Buckwheat, yes, uh, that's why I, 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 I'm I doing this. Not everyone does this, by the way. Um, so, I am having, as I said, South Florida get the AQ, Richmond getting the AQ. I know Cooper Burns disagrees with that. I don't think they're getting in without winning the conference tournament. So what does that mean? That means that if the American is a one big league, if the A-10 is a one big league, um, that's two more spots for bubble teams. So let's take a look at some of the bubble teams. And I'll just have Ian, our producer, just run them on the screen here to give you a sense of some of these bubble teams. St. John's. Um, they're right on the edge. What do they got to do? They got to beat Seton Hall. Beat Seton Hall, and if Virginia, Mississippi State, New Mexico falter, they get in. They're right on that edge. Next one um, for these bubble teams, you'll see here. Wake Forest. Again, shaky resume. Need some help, and they have to beat Notre Dame or Georgia Tech. If they do that, you know, they're going to be in position to be in position to get a potential bid and land in Dayton. Next one. Texas A&M. You know, they lost to the worst teams. It's crazy that Arkansas was the worst team, uh, one of the worst teams in the SEC. Uh, I totally was wrong on them. So two losses to Arkansas at Vanderbilt. Five quad one wins, yes, all at home, if I'm not mistaken. Second round against, uh, well, actually, they, they did play well in that tournament in Orlando, but still. Um, second round against Ole Miss in the SEC tournament. They got to win that game. It's that simple. Absolutely have to win that game. Um, one more that um, I go back and forth on Pitt. Pitt passes the eye test. Pitt is an NCAA tournament team. They won at Duke. They won at Virginia. They beat Wake. Lost to a really bad Missouri. Lost to Miami. Um, I will not be shocked if Pitt gets in over Mississippi State, New Mexico, uh, maybe even Virginia. Um, but they got to win that first quarterfinal game. Pitt has to win that quarterfinal game. Without question. Uh, I think that absolutely has to happen. So let's go to our chat here. Anderson says, what has to happen for Michigan State to get in the tournament? Um, they got to beat Minnesota. If they don't beat Minnesota, they're going to sweat. Uh, e. Rose says, I truly believe San Diego State will win the Mountain West Conference and boost their seed. If they do that, yeah, they could get to a five. I still think they're in the six range. Noah, Creighton over Iowa State for that two line in the Midwest, in my opinion, but I like the bracket overall. Thank you. Um, not quite sure if that'll happen. No, Pucci says, Andy, do I think BC will make it? No. Uh, they open with Miami in the first round of the ACC. They'd have to win the ACC tournament. Iowa State, um, will make the final four. Um, 
It all depends on where they are in the bracket. <laughs> uh, Montoya. Um, he likes me going after E. Rose on the Indiana State thing. <laughs> Taylor Catlett. How far can James Madison go? 31 wins could be a Cinderella. Yeah, I mean, again, um, they had sort of a good opening, rough middle, and now they're back playing the way they did earlier. Cooper Burns, Drake to the Sweet 16. Look, Tucker DeVries, DeVries could definitely lead in the Sweet 16. It all is about matchups. Zach Covert, as a Boise State grad, I have no clue what to expect from the Broncos. If they're on the eight line, uh, I need a good draw. That's correct. Um, you just want to avoid Purdue, Houston, UConn. I'm not saying that Carolina is going to be an easy one to beat, but I just think those three are a little bit up. Um, now, that would be a great matchup, Azim. If it ends up being Houston and Kentucky in the same, I'd love to see that Elite Eight game too. Straight out of 3-1-3, yes, the Buffs deserve to get in. They earned it. Sweeping the Oregon schools on the road. Um, Buckwheat thinks that if Tennessee relies 75% of its offense on Dalton Connect, they won't get there. Well, they certainly have more ability to score, so let's see what happens. Yes, A.J. Park, when Texas A&M is at their best, yeah, they, they've looked really good. You say Sweet 16 team, however you define that. But they have not been consistently at their best. Um, I don't think Cooper, Iowa State will fall anymore. Yes, Buckwheat, Grand Canyon is another sleeper team. Um, there's a question about Arizona drawing, a, a, you know, that, that, that it's a tough draw. No question about that. So let's review. We've got Purdue as the number one in the Midwest, North Carolina, the number one in the West as the fourth one. Houston, the number one in the South. UConn, the number one in the East. Um, we'll see how it all plays out uh, over uh, again. Oh, L. Jordan, nine. Just wants a shout out again. He's a loyal watcher, engager, whatever you want to call it here here in the Bleach Report app. Uh, I'm on my way to Minnesota for the Big Ten Tournament. Uh, we will talk again Sunday night from Minneapolis after the selections. Two shows on the Bleach Report app. Of course, we'll have other stuff leading up to the first games next week. Um, and you can certainly catch me on the sidelines on Big Ten Network this week and then next week on CBS, TBS, True TV, TNT, uh, all of them, uh, joining Kevin Harlan, Stan Van Gundy, and Dan Bonner. Uh, so look forward to all that. Don't know where I'll be yet, but I'll be somewhere. And uh, the madness is uh, beginning here Tuesday, ACC tournament, tipping things off um, this afternoon. And then uh, it's really getting crazy Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday is a monster day in all these uh, major conference tournaments. Then we usually get the semis or finals on Saturday and then the finals on Sunday leading into the selection show. Thanks again for everything during our regular season run here on this app, on these streams. It's been tremendous. I love the engagement. Appreciate everyone. As always, you can follow us on the Bleach Report app, NCAA.com, March Madness, MBB. You can follow me at the Andy Cats on Twitter and X and at the Real Andy Cats on Instagram. Enjoy the games, and I will talk to you all Selection Sunday night.